So thank you. Thank you for uh, being here. And, and uh, I was listening to, uh, to Brendan this morning, and I thought, you know, I had a pretty good week back in 1995, too, which is uh, when I wrote uh, Wikipedia. And I will point out that that was in March, not May. So I, uh, I, I got him beat by, a, by a, 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 a couple of months. But it's, it's uh, 17 years have gone by, and I've had another go at another, uh, another wiki. And I'm, I'm a little worried here, because uh, the screen just went black. But uh, the, uh, uh, the one thing I've learned in 17 years is it's time to, uh, to work with JavaScript. And, and I've had uh, a chance to do a new wiki. It's, it is interesting what can and can't be done. Uh, let me pay attention to this a little bit. We did practice this morning. So uh, I, I have, uh, for this year, I uh, have a position as an open data fellow at, uh, at Nike. And they have been focusing in the area of sustainability, uh, collecting data. And what I had is a chance to, to uh, look at this problem of sharing data. I've gotten uh, a lot of advice from people. Code for America, for example, is uh, uh, doing a very similar thing with governments. and, and uh, to, to tackle that in a corporate environment is uh, uh, a real challenge. So uh, what I've done is uh, rethink Wiki as an environment for sharing data. And the, uh, the idea that uh, a page could be marked up in uh, JSON instead of uh, you know, having full page markup, uh, the idea that the JSON could move around. I can pull JSON from a lot of different places. Uh, off the web. Uh, this is called uh, cross-origin resource sharing. You know, it's kind of a sign of uh, spyware, but uh, I'm doing it for good. And uh, I've got a lot of great pictures here that I'll show you in a second that uh, uh, show this, this working. I've gone back to uh, uh, pattern languages. Pattern languages, of course, is, you know, kind of predate uh, hypertext. Uh, the great uh, work done by Alexander in uh, uh, the 70s, uh, where he wrote a book about this thick that was organized as a pattern language. Whoa, look at that. OK, and uh, uh, put that in this, this new environment. Let's see if we can get the slides going here. So uh, with that, this is what it looks like. I've decided to make a page nice and small so that uh, uh, people compose to that. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the original work. Uh, it's not quite uh, open yet. But uh, if we go ahead, this is uh, 10 years old. Uh, let me just say that original work, it, it, what attracted me is not only the organization, but it really believed that people uh, needed to live in a place that supported their lives. It, it talked about be, uh, space being alive. Now, now here we. Uh, we see uh, uh, this is only 10 years old. This was done by a group called the EcoTrust in Portland. And they said, well, not only does it have to be alive, we've got to kind of live within our budget, you know, just for our footprint on the Earth. And they said, instead of telling people all over the world how to live, let's just figure out how to live in the uh, Pacific Northwest. And so in a, in a coastal uh, forest. Uh, but but this, this idea that, that there could be advice that's organized as a hypertext because it's a lot of advice. It's a lot of different things going on, and you got to kind of keep track of them. Now, this has uh, gone right up to today. This is, again, this idea of the hypertext, a lot of information to cover, but we finally have data on the page. And this data, in, in this case, is about the number of people, the number of dollars, but also a lot of other things like carbon footprint and so forth that have to be balanced. This is the budget turned into a computation, and the computation takes place on the page. Uh, this, is, uh, this is my own work where we're even getting more numerical. Here I have whole data sets. You know, so this JSON is a big tree. And the rendering as a page stops when it kind of loses track of what's going on. It just makes a thumbnail, kind of like a thumbnail of an image. It's a thumbnail of a data set. And then if you want to see more detail, 
you pull up a visualization. And the visualizations don't have to be on the same page. They find each other, and that's a, a pretty fabulous thing. But the thing that makes this exciting to me is that these pages can come from all over. I bring all of these into one web page, many wiki pages in one web page, and I expect them to work together. Of course, having a Creative Commons license makes this practical. What I'm really telling people is go out there and start copying, that copying is a creative activity, and I truly believe that. Now, uh, what I want to do here is show you this in a demo. And, and you know, we like to say that the browser is a kind of transitional technology. So I want to show it to you in a browser. And I'm thinking as I was making these slides, gosh, I wouldn't mind making my browser look a little more like that. But uh, right now it looks like this. And, and I will say that uh, you know, I have three computers I use all the time. And I have a different standard browser on each one so that I use them all. Uh, this one just happens to be this one. Uh, and and uh, let's, uh, this is what I want you to look for. Here are two different pages off of two different sites, two different data sets rendered in the same visualization. So that visualization comes up, finds those data sets in the DOM, pulls the data out of them, and uh, plots it. This one's a little more complicated. Here I have one data set being pulled up by two calculators. This is kind of looking at uh, how are you leading an active lifestyle and calculating how much energy you use in a day. And uh, two different, you know, kind of, you know, today and an aspirational goal. And then having those two plotted on the same graph coming from the same site, which is a different site. So this is all stuff, you know, coming together uh, in the DOM. So here's what it looks like in person. This is. Uh, Uh, here, here it is. This is, this, is, this is an interesting case. If I go back here, this is saying, well, here's some data. I call up the data. This is, this is about materials. Uh, like, we can look at cotton. And this is imagining somebody who's got a new kind of cotton and wants to hold their cotton up against, you know, from an environmental perspective, against some other cotton. So here, now, now there's something pretty magical happening here. When I, when I click this link, it couldn't find cotton on the blue site. So it says, well, maybe it's over there in the brown site. And so it's actually doing a kind of probing, handling 404s in the JavaScript and saying, gee, I don't seem to have anything on cotton. Let's go see what the, and down there in the bottom is kind of the history of the edits. And those colorful ones are where you know, those pages got copied. And it remembers where they're copied. And that makes a search path to go look for originals. But here, there is something about this. Uh, this Egyptian cotton. So when I click on that, it, uh, yeah, I'm not sure why it's not uh, clicking there. When I click on that, it, uh, it brings up, uh, uh, and this time it did find it on the local site. And, and it says, well, why not uh, put that up on that chart? When I call up the chart, again, it couldn't find it on the blue site. So I tried the brown site again. So I'm hopping in and out between different sites. Uh, all handled by JavaScript coming from the blue site, but it figures out how to go find this other content. And, and it's really kind of nicely connected. So as I run through the different data sets, it's orienting that graph. This is D3. I love D3. I was bragging about this, and then the people last night at the D3 you know, meetup you know, just showed truly fabulous stuff. So I'm almost embarrassed to show this because it's simple. But getting that thing to rotate is something we couldn't do just a few years ago. Anyway, uh, if, I, uh, if I show you something else here, this is, this is that same thing. Here I'm, I'm doing calculations. Uh, again, I can scrub through the data. Uh, this is interesting. All these things, by the way, are, are meant to be you know, drag and drop editable. You know, I can, same with this data set. I can take uh, uh, data and move it around to uh, other pages if I want to make sure I have the right data set. But I really like this idea of being able to pull data up. Uh, double click uh, gives you an editor, another editor. Now this is this calculator is uh, here. What I have is I have a paragraph, and the markup is a markup that is designed just for describing activity. So I say I sleep eight hours a day, eight hours of computer office work, uh, one hour reading the newspaper. It's really reading blogs, but I call it the newspaper. And when I uh, when I save that. 
because it knows that this is a special markup, this isn't wiki markup, this is some special metabolic efficiency markup, it understands it, renders it, produces those uh, scaled totals. This is using data that's available over here. I can show you there's, there's the JSON. It's just a bunch of activities and, and uh, how much energy they take. And, and then the best thing is I can go say, well, you pull up that radar chart on it. And now that radar chart is, is plotting these activities. And in fact, I still emit enough events that it spins around. So, so the message here is, you know, APIs is everything, right? But the APIs of the future are memory to memory APIs from content that's being pulled from different sites. And this is like finding things in the DOM, interpreting data attachments, handling events. All this stuff is the API of the future. And, you know, I'm just scratching the surface and everything I do feels good, feels encouraging. You know, and in my mind, I'm thinking, gosh, I could pull JavaScript off of all those things. Just in time, compiler compiles it like it was written together, even though it never was. The, the opportunities are fabulous. I, I think I'm preaching to the choir here, but I wanted to show you what I'm doing. And I think that this is going to make a kind of wiki where it isn't a promise of a neutral point of view, but it's a promise of attention to uh, outcomes, attention to measurement. You know, you can have an opinion about how to live our lives in the future, but you've got to tie that to, to realistic data. You know, so in the blogosphere, you'll have people off, you know, in one side yelling at people on the other side. In the Wikipedia, you have one place and they all have to get along with this kind of neutral point of view. I have something in between where it's kind of like the blogosphere, you get to be yourself, but it's kind of like a wiki in that there's a lot of incentive for uh, understanding each other through all this copying and this, this idea that there's data there that needs to be explained. With that, I uh, encourage uh, everybody to, uh, to, to look forward to this new way of computing, which is, you know, very, uh, you know, uh, uh, I don't even want to say browser, centric, but it's, 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 it's going to happen on what we have to call the client side. It'll be JavaScript driven. It'll be very data intensive and it's going to be fabulous. And uh, we'd love to have you uh, helping us all out, uh, you know, charting a course to a better world. So thank you.